Okay, well, my name is Jerry Roseman, and this is Harlan, Iowa. And I've been a farmer for the most part since 1974. Um, been what we would call a, a cutting edge, advanced technology farmer, using all the most advanced technologies out here that were made available to us. I was uh, also a seed dealer for quite some years too, you know, so I was also not only using the technology, I was promoting it and selling it to the other farmers in the area. And in our, our uh, livestock operation, we were a fairly sizable farrow to finish hog operation and also a quite fairly large cow-calf operation. And we've been feeding, growing and, and feeding the, the GMO corn since 1997. And basically we fairly we got along what we assumed we were getting along fine with them. But when we started feeding our 2000 corn crop, we started experiencing a, um, a reproductive problem in our swine first. It was, uh, we started experiencing what they called a pseudo-pregnancy. These animals had all the physical, logical aspects of being pregnant, but they weren't. And this, this happens occasionally out here, and it's, uh, usually there's some certain toxins that will do it. And well, we were checking for all the, the known problems, and we couldn't find anything. And then the other thing was, is that this didn't affect just a few, it was affecting 80% of our, our swine. I mean, they would, they would uh, show all the signs of being pregnant, they would go through the, the whole motions and their due dates would come and go, and they would just basically just absorb their, we thought they were absorbing their pigs back up, or they would deliver a bag of water. I mean, and then the whole cycle would start over again. And through a process of elimination over approximately a 12-month time period, we determined that it was the corn that was doing this. And well, the, the one thing that we'd done differently in the 2000 corn crop was that we'd switched to a different company's genetics. <clears throat> and that's when we started experiencing this problem. So we, uh, we were switching back and forth between different years' production, and we were noticing that it was the 2000 corn crop that would do this. And then through a... Uh, Oh, a series of uh, stories uh, it, it, through the media, we find, had found that, uh, well, first I found in the immediate county, in the immediate area here, I found five other farmers that they were experiencing the same problem. <clears throat> and the, the uh, genetic base, the livestock styles, the production facilities were all different except we had one common denominator we all had the exact same corn that we were feeding these animals. And we were getting the, the same exact same end result with the, with the swine. And in most of the cases, once we figured this out, the farmers went ahead and switched to a different supply of corn and their problems basically went away. Um, as far as for my instances, it was too late. I had experienced such a huge financial loss that I eventually, I. Uh, I lost the, the farm and um, I'm basically out of business now. I no longer produce livestock on a large scale. I have a small farm and I'm basically doing um, some research work. I'm doing uh, some promotional work for consulting with several small associations and whatnot, prevent, promoting organic farming now. But uh, the long and the short of it was is once we determined that this was the cause and we went to the authorities, you know, basically the seed corn company to tell them that this is the problem that we had had found and it was within their genetics. And well, the only response from the seed corn company was the fact that to um, basically discredit the farmers, um, to basically challenge their management styles, they did everything under their power, to blame anything and everything but the corn. The re initial researchers that were involved with this project and were basically determined that this was the problem were um, harassed, intimidated to change their stories. Um, one switch researcher was um, threatened with job termination if he ever talked to me again. Um, the major university, Iowa State University here, 
basically they plagiarized their um, or that's not the correct word but they um, <clears throat> they basically recanted everything that they had said because basically Monsanto told them that that was what it was to do you know they had, had huge research grants coming from Monsanto and all the seed corn companies for that matter I mean the minute this hit the national airways and we started getting some press we received calls from another 25 farmers scattered out in the Midwest that were all experiencing the same problems. Some of them later on called and thanked me that they were able to uh, make the changes and save their operations, you know. Um, one individual said that uh, his lenders were going to force him out of business because they thought he was a poor operator until this data was put forth to him and then they left him keep on operating then. <clears throat> and as, as and this was in 2000, 2001 is when this went on. 2002 was my last farming year. Um, we uh, had uh, correlated some some information that uh, uh, there were some researchers out of Baylor University in Texas that had peer review published. Um, scientific studies that they had already correlated this problem to corn in their lab rat testing facilities and they'd, they've identified the compounds that were causing the problem <clears throat> and to a certain extent the dosage levels and at that time that was the part that really bothered me all the while that I was working through this these issues was is that you know if, if, if this is bothering our hogs, if it's bothering our cattle then what's it doing to the humans? Because it, as we know, the diets out here have changed over the years and there's more corn products being incorporated into the human diet every day. And at, at that spot, I had, was put in connections with this, this work done out of Baylor. And I mean, it said right in there that this is what would happen, this is the concerns, they had isolated these compounds, off of the food products that they'd gotten out of grocery store shelves already, that this was already out here, and the humans were eating it, and they had identified it as being a, a mestrogen, an estrogen mimicker. That's what we've been working with here. Is was an, is an estrogen mimicking compound that has been basically an, an unanticipated side effect of the, the seed genetics somehow. Whether it was GE originated or GE enhanced, we don't know. Could very well be. You know, and it's a, it's a subset that's happening with, within the technology. But as we went along through this, we come to find out that the, basically the seed industry is not testing. They've done absolutely no long-term feeding trials with any livestock, and they absolutely resist even the idea of doing it. And this was brought to the fact by several of the researchers that I was working with. They said that, you know, technically they're not doing any testing whatsoever on this. They're saying they are, but, but they're not. The researchers out of Texas said they'd run into the same brick wall when they went to the FDA wanting to do more studying on this problem. They said they weren't interested. It was not an issue of their concern. And basically they said they weren't going to. And then they could turn around and tell the public that all ample testing is being done. Well, no, it's not. The only really long-term testing that's been done out here is has been in the livestock industry and to a certain extent the humans out here, that's the, the feeding trial that's going on at the moment. There's nothing that's been documented anywhere as far as these things. And the worst part of it is, is the minute that there is any quote, you know, so to speak, opposition or the fact that you bring up a topic of that they're not really wanting to hear about they immediately line up all their paid consultants and bury the use paperwork claiming that they um, have researched this. Well, no, they haven't, you know. And anybody that comes forward wanting to do the right thing, they, they just browbeat them, just beat them into the ground so that no one can hear what's going on. It's, it's a big concern. <clears throat> one of... One of the researchers that came to me initially, and he was the one that connected me with the uh, the studies that had been done out of, of Baylor University and he said he said I found this and I found you 
And he says, your pigs are doing exactly the same thing as what their rats were doing down there. And he said, I've been following this for approximately 24 months already in northeast Iowa with dairy cows where they're having problems with, they don't want to reproduce as long as they are on GMO grain products, corn silage, that sort of thing. And he says, and when they ever they, they switch the forages in the summer and they get back out in grass or they start getting green chopped alfalfa, the problem seems to go away. He said, I haven't correlated this back as far as you did to track it to certain hybrids are in there. So, as we're, we're talking, I'm visiting with him and I said, what is, what is your expertise, what is your doctorate? And he says, well actually, he says, I'm, uh, and he was with the ARS lab, the USDA in Ames, and he says, I am, uh, my, he says, I am head of the toxicology department up here. He says, I, he says, I'm the poison plant doctor. I said, well, how does that fit in with, with what we're talking about here? He says, when they genetically engineer the corn stock and put the Bacillus thuringiensis into the corn plant, he says, he said, it becomes a poison plant. And that part just really just hit me. I had not really correlated that together. He says, that whole plant is poison. And he says, and the thing that's going on is they're saying, well, these poisons are only specific, they only bother certain things, and the rest of it is supposed to be benign. So, but he says, this is, this is the area that, of my expertise, and this is where I'm working at. And he, by the way, was a researcher that was threatened with job termination if he ever talked to me again. I mean, it just, they totally come down on him really big and hard. So, that's kind of the overview here, anyway. And did you shut up? No, not really. <laughs>